What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lion Mart TV Market with another exciting, delighting, and much interesting video here on the channel. So, HE Peter will be actually tweeted this morning that after the implementation of the oral signing report, which yes, President Tinubu implemented, I think yesterday also, where he merged most of the ministry, including EFCC, a lot of ministries, he actually merged them into um, federal ministries to save Nigeria of course and yes a lot of people actually reach out to his excellency and ask that okay if you were the president would you have done this same thing and uh his response was quite very very intelligent and smart and yes he 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 said so many things that relate uh, that's just related to this particular one well let me not waste your time let me just read everything out from what he said he said i received several text messages from people wanting to know if I would have implemented the Orun Sai report, which full implementation has been directed by the president in response to their questions. I would like to refer to everyone to my manifesto and my response to similar questions during the campaign. On the 5th of October, 2022, at Harvard University, at Harvard University, I was asked, will you implement the Oransa report and I responded in the, af in the affirmative. I went further to explain that implementing the report is one of the best ways to make governance efficient, cost-effective, and productive. Being in opposition does not warrant blind and thoughtless criticism whenever the government takes the right decision. Yes, it's true. A lot of people say, yeah, 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 no, no, no position. Eh, where you are? Well, that he's just said it out. Like him being an opposition doesn't mean that if they are doing good things, um, he will not support them. Uh, at about some weeks ago, I read a report here when he talks about when it when he advised the federal government, you know, to stop the uh, implementation of high cost of uh, uh, import duty on traders, businessmen, and all of that. And yes, immediately the government they swung into action, and yes, it stabilized the economy even more. Now let's continue. He went for that to say we should agree if agree and if me propose related or even better ideas to move the nation forward. I have always been an advocate of the three critical components of the Oransai report, which are one, drastically cutting the cost of governance, two, eliminating the up overlapping of responsibilities to ensure that responsibilities are appropriate appropriately domicile and three increasing the efficiency and effectiveness which will increase productivity he went ahead to say although the implementation of the report is long overdue its implementation is a welcome development so long as the decision is to inform by these principles beyond implementation the Rasai report the government should go further and cut the cost of governance across board. Having found it imperative to implement the report, the government should now do away with the bogus and needless wastage of our scarce resources on frivolous issues and deploy such funds to the critical areas of education, health, and pulling people out of poverty. However, we must not rush to implement the Ransai report just because those that will directly will be directly affected by mostly civil servants. A very deep understanding of the workings of the of the federal bureaucracy will be required to effectively implement the report. Grasping the, the symmetrics between the federal and the other tiers of government will be imperative as Federal agencies have branch and outreach in all that is state. We, the political leaders, should be ready to back up such implementation with our sacrifices from comfort and self selfishness for the overall development of the nation. In implementing this report, conscious efforts must be made to caution the effect of such a major overhaul on the workers to avoid driving more people into hardship in these very challenging times. Also, Nigerians are yet to be informed about the exact white paper 
pertinent to the report implementation. Moreover, you cannot ask those people who are likely to be affected by the downsizing to manage the process. Governments must also show clearly the amount of resources to be saved in the implied shrinking of government. It should also indicate clearly where and how the same resources are are to be redeployed. Yes, I think this is like, okay, now you've shrinked these ministries, you've made EFCC into Ministry of Defense and other ministries. Okay, can you tell us how the money you realize from all of these ministries, where are they put into now? Which which tier of government is the money going to? What is What are you using the money for? I guess that's what H.E. Peter O.B. is talking about here. He said, more importantly, the implementation needs to be accompanied by a template to avoid a, f- a future bloating of government by doing the right thing and implementing the right policy. We will also build the new Nigeria of our dream people. Now, I I must I must confess that um, HEP to be really understand this this whole game, this whole game of politics. And you know, ruling ruling is something on its own. It's it's difficult and not a lot of people really understand that ruling is difficult um another story i would like to add to this one is um gvru gvru replied uh for those of you who don't know gvru is the governor badebo vivo rod the, the um labor party governorship candidate of lagos state uh he actually responded to the criticisms from uh Shailo, uh a comedian who said uh Vivo actually insulted the the Lagos State Obas. Let me just read it out. He said, responding to that one, he said, hear, hear yourself and decide whether to reward a party and their views and dishonest supporters who spread falsehood, hate, and bigotry, or we can embrace a vision for Lagos where no one is left behind. Our Lagos. He is now he's responding to Shay Law. Uh, I'm just going to play you the video of um, Shei Law uh, and what he actually said. Whatever you are building, mm. mm-hmm. build, don't build from a faulty foundation. Mm-hmm. Make sure your foundations are right first and build on that foundation so that when you carry everybody along, when you they talk, you begin to say there are some obas on a Godouan, they go go on that bridge. The traditional institution that your people value. You know, say some of us will go there, we will say we're there educated. But you see, traditionally, you know, go insult my father, and you can't tell me, say, man, I can't vote for you. You know, they're possible. So he had made some certain mistakes, you understand, that has affected him. But that doesn't mean that every other children born from a mixed tribe will also suffer the same. When the white man came to Africa, and Nigeria, they turned everything upside down. Our traditional rulers had significant roles in community, security, just the balance of the entire system. Now, Nigeria, I'm sorry, but we are suffering from identity crisis. We are, you know? And for me, we want to restore the dignity to ruling houses in Lagos State. We want to restore the autonomy of ruling houses in Lagos State. They are having to do these things not because they are happy, not because they want to, but they found that they don't have a choice. And there's a constitution that gives the governor the power that he exudes on them. But because you have power does not mean you should use power in a certain way. Because the local governments, the communities suffer for this. I'll give you an example. I was supposed to get a title from the Akran of Badagri. All plans have been made, everything has been going forward. All of a sudden, Songulu declared and wrote a letter that no king, no Ibile king should give title to anybody until after election. For what? For what? That, that is an insult of the highest order. Like I say, because the white man came and in his conquest of you, established a constitution for himself that gave him power over the kings, you come into that system, you now inherit the position of the white man, it does not mean you have to behave like the white man. Because you have a certain level of power, does not mean you should accept it 
because you must always understand the history of how these things came to be so for me i will come with the approach of restoring the dignity to our kings and showing that the process that establishes our kings there are people that are loved by their people the people that don't have to run away from their people or live behind fences and those will be kings over those people in those places because those kings will make my life easier when we are dealing with high youth unemployment when we are dealing with drug abuse the kings and the traditional houses have a role to play and we'll be working together to ensure we have a better league.